I'm Aaliyah Alexander. As a nonprofit in Los Angeles, Kids in the Spotlight outshines other organizations because they provide a platform for foster youth to heal and grow from their trauma through the power of storytelling and filmmaking. Executive Director Taiji Charity started the organization in 2009, offering 10 to 15 week programs for foster youth to learn from Hollywood professionals like Modern Family's Ty Burrell, how to write, cast, and star in their own short films. Every single year, Kids in the Spotlight hosts its Kids Awards at Paramount Studios, where their films are showcased for the very first time. In the past 11 years since its start, Kids in the Spotlight has produced more than 86 films. These films have even been showcased in film festivals all across the country. These films don't only have an impact on the filmmakers themselves, but also on everyone that gets to experience them. My team wanted to take a closer look at how we could provide overall sustainability for Kids in the Spotlight as a whole. So we decided to first take a look at their donors. Hi, my name is Kiara Devine. In order to get a better understanding of Kids in the Spotlight as a whole, as well as look at outside factors that could benefit them, my team and I decided to begin our research by looking at Kids in the Spotlight's current donor database. We found that in 2019, 91.4% of Kids in the Spotlight's total donor income was coming from only 7.3% of their donors. We knew this meant that we wanted to scale up those smaller donations, but we also wanted to understand how to, um, sorry, we also wanted to understand how to attract potential donors. In order, to do this, in order to do this, we spoke with current Kids in the Spotlight donors. From these interviews, we discovered three main findings. The first, Tai G Charity was identified as a key messenger for the program and a key component in onboarding potential donors and volunteers. Next, donors agreed that Kids in the Spotlight's social media presence could be more cohesive as a way to promote their brand identity. And lastly, donors agree that the reason they are so heavily invested in Kids in the Spotlight and are so passionate about its cause is after seeing the impact that this program has on the lives of foster youth. We also spoke with a development expert from San Diego State University's College of Professional Studies in Fine Arts. From her, we learned one of the best ways for a nonprofit to receive sustainable funding is through relationships with corporate partners. In order, to do this effective, in order to do this effectively, we learned that Kids in the Spotlight must first demonstrate a need for funding, next identify where exactly the funds would be going within the organization, and lastly create a strong social media presence as a way to mutually benefit potential corporate partners. Hi, I'm Emily Kasha and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about corporate matching. Turns out two to three billion dollars are donated through these programs every year, yet four to seven billion remains unclaimed. With corporate matching, employers match or often double the donations of their employees to eligible nonprofits. We found that 65% of Fortune 500 companies already have programs like this in place. The key to securing these partnerships is by developing relationships with corporate social responsibility officers. As we all know, relationships are stronger when they're mutually beneficial. So we, oh, nonprofits can offer organizations promotion opportunities through social media. So we took a look at our most successful competitor's social media presence. Hi, my name is Paloma Saiza. My team and I conducted a competitor analysis of Human Stuff New York versus Kids in the Spotlight. Factors such as the similarity of the market, the type of content, and the message strategies provided an opportunity for us to be able to compare and contrast the social media practices within the organization. With the use of a professional camera, Human Stuff New York built intimacy between the viewer and the subject of the photo. Kids in the Spotlight social media could benefit from this intimacy that could later on lead to the development of new relationships with their followers and potential donors as well. We also took a look at Together We Rise, which is another nonprofit aiming to improve the lives of foster youth within the Los Angeles area. Together We Rise employs calls to action across their social media platforms. They also make sure to incorporate adoption information, but most importantly, they take advantage of corporate partnerships. Through our research, we found that Together We Rise has a total of 44 CSR partnerships. This is an area where Kids in the Spotlight can build and continue to foster these corporate partnerships as evidenced through our development expert interview mentioned by Kiara. Guided by our research, we developed the following SWOT analysis as a baseline for our campaign. As an organization, some of its strengths are that they work directly with youth meaning that they have an immediate impact on the youth's lives. They also provide youth with opportunities for future careers and give them the skills that they need. 
This can also be done through their Celebrity Ambassador Program. Because they're located in Los Angeles, it is the city central to the entertainment industry, which also serves as one of their strengths. Now taking a look at some of their weaknesses. Kids in the Spotlight social media lacks cohesive branding and strong engagement. They also do not currently monetize any of their YouTube videos or films. Some opportunities that Kids in the Spotlight has includes gaining national media coverage and having celebrity ambassadors to encourage donations. Given their location, Kids in the Spotlight also has the ability to form partnerships with nearby film studios. And finalizing with the organization's threats, there's a multitude of nonprofits working with foster youth. Kids in the Spotlight lacks a consistent call to action across their media coverage. They could also strengthen and increase the number of donor partnerships. In addition, most monthly donations are minimal, which result in an impact in the organization's programs. Hi, I'm Jaden Arnold, and the next step in our process is planning. Our goal for this campaign was to increase awareness of the organization's mission and funding needs among the Kids in the Spotlight target publics and to establish CSR relationships. From this goal, my team identified three objectives. First, we wanted to focus on increasing engagement among the Kids in the Spotlight social media audience by 10%. We also wanted to increase the calls to action in media coverage by 10%. Our final focus was to increase the number of CSR relationships by 20%. Each of these objectives were set to be achieved by the end of May of this year. These goals and objectives guided my team to our campaign strategy. Hi, I'm Natalie Borton. We use the argument strategy to strengthen brand recognition and persuade potential donors to get involved with kids in the spotlight. Throughout our campaign, we used Aristotle's model of the three appeals method to create effective messaging in all the materials that we produced. Ethos identified how to best reach current donors with a proven history of giving. Logos established measurable goals to guide our implementation. And Pathos created messaging strategies to tell the story of kids in the spotlight. Hi, I'm Sophia Burt. We used James E. Grunig's Situational Theory of Publics to identify kids in the spotlight's target audiences. This theory states that publics can be identified and classified in the contents to which they are aware of a problem or organization. These publics can be placed into three different categories. Latent, which means passive, aware, or active. For Kids in the Spotlight, we identified corporate social responsibility donors as latent, and we wanted to shift them towards aware. For media outlets, we identified them as aware, and we wanted to shift them towards active. After identifying our target audiences, we created messaging to strengthen Kids in the Spotlight's brand. Hi, I'm Lindsay Kainer. These are our three commercial messaging strategies for current and potential donors. We wanted to identify what makes Kids in the Spotlight different from other nonprofits and showcase that in our messaging. Kids in the Spotlight gives foster youth a platform to speak, validation for their struggles, and an opportunity to change the trajectory of their lives. Kids in the Spotlight provides an impact beyond the screen that is made possible through relationships with donors. No matter how your story started, you can always write the next chapter. Our messaging team found that from these three commercials, Kids in the Spotlight identified most strongly with the hashtag impact beyond the screen and that it would translate best as the focus of our campaign. Hello, I'm Carly Nolan. Our next portion of the campaign is implementation. Our implementation tactics touched on every area that we heavily researched from CSR and media pitching to social media. Our team's execution began with social media. Hi, I'm Julia Pappas. For one of our objectives, our team implemented a social media strategy to increase online engagement across all Kids in the Spotlight social media platforms. We hired an external graphic designer to create templates using Kids in the Spotlight brand colors and theme of clapperboards and film strips. We created a social media calendar to help them schedule posts with captions that incorporate our messaging and the branded hashtag impact beyond the screen. We place each graphic in a strategic order to create a cohesive feed, which encourages brand consistency. In our initial content analysis, it shows that more graphics and storytelling do better for overall engagement and future success for the nonprofit in terms of potential CSR donors and partnerships. Hi, my name is Sahara Velasquez, and our next strategy was to pitch to the media. 
So we initially targeted niche media because of how active and engaged they are. For example, we first researched and pitched to podcasts that focus on the Black Lives Matter movement and Christian podcasts because not only are they very engaged, but they're also involved in making donations. We also targeted outlets in the LA area that focus on nonprofit organizations and foster youth. However, as our implementation took place around the time when the World Health Organization first declared coronavirus a pandemic, we knew that we had to pitch outside of LA and branch, and branch outside of LA and pitch to outlets that focus on much more broader topics such as entertainment and advocacy. In our email pitches and phone calls, we made sure to emphasize our calls to actions because in previous media coverage, calls to actions weren't emphasized or mentioned. Overall, we made multiple rounds of email pitches and phone calls. We made sure to follow up with every single person that we reached out to. And in total, our team actually reached out to 130 media contacts that are connected to newspapers, magazines, radio shows, television programs, and podcasts. Hi, my name is Gabby Budahas, and in our last implementation strategy, we pitched to corporate social responsibility officers. We began with eight that related to production and had really strong histories of giving. Then we did a second wave, and in our third wave, we reached out to a list that was given to us by Kids in the Spotlight. In total, we ended up pitching to 81. It was actually crazy. We used the strategy in order to increase donations to Kids in the Spotlight through CSR efforts and corporate matching. We identified missions of each organization and tailored each email with a specific messaging strategy that we thought would be the most effective. Each email had a background of kids in the spotlight, specific donation statistics, foster youth stats, and an opportunity to meet with Taiji to discuss the future potential benefits of a partnership. Hi, I'm Mariah Hugo and let's move into evaluation. As you heard from Sahara earlier, we diversified our media outreach, and that resulted in two recorded podcasts and two published articles. We have a third article coming out with Foster Focus Magazine, a national magazine dedicated to foster care. Kiara told us that Taiji is the key messenger for kids in the spotlight. So now let's look at an article from Kamala Kirk of the LA Downtown News. The LA Downtown News receives over 168,000 unique page views per month, and their weekly newspaper circulation is 30,000. This article includes Taiji's voice. She shares the stories of how Kids in the Spotlight changes lives. This also includes a call to action to learn more about the program. Taiji spoke with Anthony Trucks, host of Oz Shift podcast. He grew up in the foster care system and he played in the NFL. The podcast aired on Monday and 20% of it is a direct call to action through either monetary donations or following kids in the spotlight on social media. He later expressed that he wants to get more involved in the program, whether it's a cameo appearance in a film or as an ambassador. Taiji spoke with Evan Pondell of Made in LA podcast too, and their conversation inspired him. He asked how he could support the program as well. Now, these connections were made through solid research, crafted pitches, and inspiring messages. Hi, I'm Maya Zeppin. All of Kids in the Spotlight's social media platforms saw an increase of engagement. The average likes across all platforms jumped from 40 to 86, which is an increase of 115% and a lot more than our initial goal of 10%. Instagram is also Kids in the Spotlight's most popular platform, so the average number of likes jumped from 26 to 66, resulting in an increase of 153%. Posts have a call to action in every caption, and those that are relatable have seen an even greater increase of engagement. Hi, my name is Sydney Northcutt. So to wrap it up, we did what we set out to do. We increased social media engagement by 115%. We saw a 40% increase in calls to action in our media coverage. These first two objectives were relatively easier to hit. CSR, on the other hand, not so much. It was more of a challenge. As you heard from Gabby, we pitched to more than 80 professionals in CSR roles. Our pitches included everyone from Salesforce to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Okay. We pitched via email and phone call using templates Kids in the Spotlight can we use. We created a pitch deck with clear calls to action and a script for Taiji to use in any future CSR partnership meetings. 
Warner Brothers indicated interest and so did Walgreens. However, they both mentioned a roadblock staying in the way of an immediate partnership, the global pandemic coronavirus. Navigating corporate social responsibility during coronavirus proved to be challenging. In a time of such economic uncertainty, it makes sense to us that companies' financial focuses are on sustaining their own funding, not on new nonprofits to give money to. But as young PR professionals, boy did we learn. With our implementation period at the height of the coronavirus pandemic, we tweaked our pitches to acknowledge the current state of the world. We learned as we went along, and yes, we wish we did some things differently. In a time of such widespread hardship, it's been therapeutic for both me and my group members to work with a client that reminds you about humanity. It's how Kids in the Spotlight can pitch itself to CSR officers in the future. So in the end, Dolby Laboratories is interested in partnering with Kids in the Spotlight, and we secured a meeting with them. And we now know that if Kids in the Spotlight continues to show their value of what they can do for others during this global pandemic, they'll be successful in creating new CSR partnerships too. Hi, I'm Olivia DiOrio, and to conclude our campaign, my team created a summary of recommendations that Kids in the Spotlight can use to stay connected with media and strengthen their donor relationships. For example, they can continue to use the hashtag Impact Beyond the Screen on posts to highlight their mission across all social media platforms. Reaching out to additional CSR and media contacts will allow them to expand their network and potentially leverage more donations over time. Taiji Charity and the whole Kids in the Spotlight crew are masters of storytelling, so continuing to push the mission and the values of the organization on the website and through social media can attract volunteers and really remind donors what their money is going towards. Lastly, they may consider hiring a development expert to assist with, fund assist with funding or even a student intern that can help manage social media and other administrative tasks. By continuing our tactics and also following our team's recommendations, we are more than confident that Kids in the Spotlight will continue to do great things because they were created to do great things. This campaign has been a journey. I speak for all of us when I say that we are beyond excited to take everything we've learned in the last 16 weeks and apply it to our professional careers. We'd like to thank Scott Pansky for being the individual who connected us to Kids in the Spotlight. Not all, PR, not all PR pros get to begin their career with such an incredible client. Kids in the Spotlight, we are humbled to have worked with you. Your organization inspired us every day and we are gonna be fans for life. We cannot wait to see the continued impact you make beyond the screen throughout foster youth. And of course, we need to thank Dr. Sweetser. I've never met anyone that gives so much to her students. Even during a global pandemic, you gave us 150% 24-7, and we are very, very grateful. That concludes our presentation. We would love to answer questions. <laughs>